Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kieran. I'm a junior doctor and a comedian. The training program for doctors is like this escalator that you go up and up and up and up and you just keep going until you become a consultant and then you start teaching other medical students who then go up their own escalators. But the new millennial doctor is doing this thing with a jump off halfway through in the middle, taking this extra year out. This year has now unofficially been called the FY3 year or foundation year three. So basically you've worked as a doctor for two years in training, you have a full registration. And before you go into more training, you're doing this extra year. We're talking about why everyone has to be taking this FY3 year, what we did in our FY3 years and the advantages of taking them. There's gonna be a flip side to this of why you might not want to take an FY3 year. So check that video out up too. I'm joined by my friend, Kieran, who is a doctor in Australia. Welcome to the channel, Kieran. Thanks so much for having me. Good, that, that's enough from you. <laughs> We both took FY3 years and we did very different things with them. Let's kick off with you. I wanna know a bit about what you did in your FY3 year. So I, t I took an F3 year and then I also have taken another F3 year or colloquially called an F4 year. So after I did my foundation one and foundation year two training, before I went to apply into a speciality training, I wasn't certain on which path that I wanted to take. I knew that there were things that I was particularly interested in, and that was surgery, emergency medicine, particularly with a skew to trauma, and radiology. But I hadn't had enough experience at that point to be able to make the, the decision definitive. So I took this year out, the first year, to be able to figure out what I wanted to do. So I spent some time working in the emergency department locuming in a trauma center. And it was really exciting, really interesting, some good times, some difficult times, some amazing people that I met. But I've slowly started to realize that this isn't a path that I would like to take long term because I don't think I was uh, in fully enthused for the work when I was going in. Can I ask, can I just jump in there quickly? Yeah, of course. So you took part in FY3 yeah, because you wanted to try out different specialties because you weren't sure what you wanted to do. And I think that's a really valid reason to do one. Yeah. Um, but why or could you not work this out when you're in foundation training and at medical school? So why did it take that long for you to then be like, well, this is what I want to do? So you you can, I think, um, I'm not, not certain it was on the length of time, but I think it's more the definitive nature of it without actually trying the things out. So for example, if you, if I wanted to go down surgical route and I tried it and then once you apply and if you get in and then you give up your surgical training number, it's almost impossible to get back into that. So there's no wavering when you're on it. So when I wanted to make my decision, I wanted to be certain. And there's so many different specialities within medicine that you can experience. It's very different when you're in medical school and you're learning the theory behind a job. It, that's very different to actually what does the work entail and what is it like to work that job. They're two very different things. So you might love the theory of neurology but hate the job of a neurologist. So I was finding, I wanted to find out by working the things that I really wanted to do. So one was working in the trauma center, which I hadn't been able to do before. So I had done emergency medicine training, but just not in the trauma center. And the second was I wanted to work in surgery, specifically looking at uh, orthopedics and plastics. So I was able to do that afterwards. And I also in that year took the time to be able to, to be able to attend events with friends. You're able to attend weddings, you're able to manage your own shift because you're locuming so you, you don't get the benefits of sick pay but you do at least get to arrange your own rotor during that time and i actually think it, it's that flexibility that people are leaning towards yeah. that's i think that's the main reason yes there's all this locuming and money stuff but i think it's the flexibility of being able to manage your own diary being able to plan your life more that people are really jumping on the bandwagon fy3 and why it's becoming such a big thing yeah exactly um, i know even for me personally, I was like, I really, really want to take time out to travel. I had traveled a fair bit before, yeah. but when you're younger, you don't have that much money to spend. And now I was able to work and able to earn that money and good money. And then I was like, well, yeah. you know, I just need that time to be able to go and do things. And that, and, and you know, I wanted to go for an extended period of time, like seven months. Yeah. So I was like, well, this, this could be a great opportunity to do it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think the restrictions of 
of the medicine pathway. Though it is, it's a fantastic career pathway, you get a huge amount of enjoyment and it's very rewarding. It is, as you said at the start, it is an escalator. So you finish your, your primary school, secondary school, sick form, exams, exams, exams. Then you go into medical school, five or six years of training. Then you go straight into your foundation years and you only between, you can only take off maximum of nine days every four months. You can't accumulate it. So you can only go on a maximum of a nine day holiday. So you don't really get to be able to do, let's say, as you said, want to go traveling. There's not really as much time to be able to do that. And when you go into your training afterwards, there's then it, you're straight back on up to eight years of of surgical training, you've got a huge number of medical years training, GP practice training. So it's a good time to be able to take that time out to do what you want and be certain on the path you want to take. It's also the rotational nature of training as a doctor in the UK, which makes it difficult to take an extended period of time out. So because you're working in either four month blocks or six months blocks and rotating around different hospitals, you have to take your annual leave for those four months. During those four months, you can't necessarily carry it over. Yeah. So taking nine days of annual leave in a four month period means that it's sometimes not even possible to go away for two weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. You'd have to work that around a bank holiday if you wanted to get two weeks off. Yeah. So just that itself, it was reason enough for, for me to start looking into it. And, and it sounds like you as well. Yeah. I think it's difficult to talk about um, FY3 year without talking about um, locuming and money. Yeah. Because I know from a lot of experiences from friends, that was one of the main reasons they did it is because they were like, I am saving for this thing. They're saving to have a child. They're saving to buy a house. They're saving to, just, just to save. Yeah. And would you tell us a bit about that, a bit about, you know, what you did with regards to that and, you know, how your wage differed between your FY2 and FY3 year? Yeah, sure. So the, the differences between the wage as a locum is as, uh, as a locum, you don't supposedly get as many training opportunities and uh, you don't get the benefits of sick leave and annual leave. And there's no guarantee that you're going to get a job in an area that you want and to offset those losses that you would have from the training program, you have a higher rate of pay. So the locum rates really are fluctuant around the country for where they are desperate for doctors. So notoriously areas that have a less number of doctors per capita will pay higher locum rates to attract doctors there to be able to fill their rotor gaps. So I think my differences were I was paid a flat rate of £44 an hour when I was locuming for my surgical job through an agency. When I was working as a locum for the internal hospital bank, I was earning £36 an hour in the day and into the low 40s uh, for night shifts and weekends. And that's significantly different from what we were earning base rate as a junior. I'm pretty sure as an F1, you're getting paid around I believe it's about 13 pounds an hour or maybe even less than that yeah. when you work it out. I think it's yeah. between maybe F1 11 and F2 13 pounds. So consider this and consider how wild this is. Yeah. Is that an F2 does a very similar job to what an FY3 locum is doing. Pretty yeah. much, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, your, your, your hours will be different, but the responsibilities will be the same. The F2 is being paid around 15 pounds an hour. To do the same job with the same responsibilities, a locum doctor that's working for the same hospital is getting paid £35 an hour. Yeah. And a locum doctor working with an agency doing the same job as that F2 doctor is getting £44 an hour. That's wild. That is that is wild. You can't tell whether that is... Is, is the question that locum get, gets paid too much or is it that the training doctors get paid too little? It's certainly the second. I, well... The training doctors get paid too little. I, 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 I think it's certainly the second. I think it just means doctors and training are just not getting paid enough yeah. is what it means. And the, the fact that doctors and training are not getting paid enough is drawing people out of training like this osmosis, like like it's sucking the trainees out of training yep. because year on year on year, the pay of doctors is not matching inflation. Doctors are taking pay cuts and now everyone wants to be a locum and the system is starting to crumble. 
That's very true. That's very true. They tried to, I know they tried to cap the locum rates in 2016 so they could say this is the maximum that a locum can get paid. Um, and that was significantly less. That cap that they put in was significantly less than the average of what locums were getting paid around the country. So all it did was it just it, it encouraged doctors to who were working, let's say you're working a full term training post and you've got a weekend off and you say, well, actually, I've got this weekend off. I'm saving, so I want to earn a bit more money. But why would you come out? You've already worked a full working week and been particularly stressed. It's been a good, bad week. You then have another one coming up straight after. Do you want to sacrifice your whole weekend or your sleeping pattern for significantly less because of a capped rate? So no. So what happened was there was just vacancies everywhere because doctors weren't working overtime to supplement that. Well, they weren't working extra overtime because they already do overtime to increase to increase the numbers. Because I think, why would you? If, you, if you're working so hard already, you're going to get taxed a lot on it already. Yeah. Where's the motivation to, to, to get out for that much? Exactly. Um, I'm going to move on slightly. So we've, sure. talked about, we've talked about FY3 years and why people might want to talk about FY3 years. We've talked about flexibility, being able to plan your life and your diary. We've talked about the, the great pay of being a locum and you've talked about you know being able to to dabble in different specialties to kind of work out where you might want to go get a bit more of a definitive idea about your training program in the future why else should everyone take an fy3 year you can sit your exams which will help for your future progression to get extra points and if you're not working a full-time rotor because you're locuming you can then choose to be off for a few weeks before your exam you're not going to work a shift you're just going to focus on your exam and that kind of flexibility really does help people out when they are sitting their exams. On top of that, you can do a huge scope of other things. So I've met people that have done research projects in Ethiopia or Malawi where they've gone and they've worked in surgical hubs, helping out and providing a bit of a medical service. People have gone to conflict zones. People have looked at alternative career pathways. People have become YouTubers. Mm. They have. Great, great people. There's so much. There's so many things that you that you can do, and people are people are very driven. And not many people just want time off to sit and do nothing. There really aren't many people that do that. People always want to do it to find things that really interest them and to take away the burden that was there with the training program, where they're not able and don't have the time and energy to be able to develop these interests when they're moving through their career. I think it's that these things just don't fit into normal training anywhere. Yeah. Going to work in a conflict zone doesn't fit into training to work in A&E or to work as a GP. Not quite. I don't I don't remember that on my on my rotor. A quick a quick trip to uh, the east eastern Ukraine. <laughs> If it did, there'd be so many more rotographs that the, the system would crumble even more. Yeah, that's true. So I, I think to explore outside interests is what I would, I would uh, encircle that part in. And, and I think that's a really valid reason yeah. to be able to take the time out. A lot of people I know, I think especially people doing surgery, felt like they needed to bolster their CVs. Yeah. They felt like, if I have more experience in surgery, I have more numbers of certain operations, I have more experience uh, to say I've done plastics and now I'm applying for orthopedics and plastics, yeah. to say I've done these research projects, it's sort of, rather than applying and not getting in, they are trying to boost up their CV to then apply and yeah. hopefully get in the next time round. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and people also use the year to be able to work abroad if they really want to work abroad. That was initially what I wanted to do for my F3 year, mm. but because of COVID, it got delayed by three months, then another three months, and, at that, and then another. And at that point, we agreed with a hospital in Australia that I would just come out a full year later. So that's why I chose to take an extra year because what I wanted to do was all the things I wanted to do in my F3, which is find out which career path and work in another country. I was planning to do that, those both in Australia. Um, so I was going to be working in a trauma center in emergency medicine and I was going to be working plastic surgery over there. And so that just got delayed by an extra year. And then one more question for you, Kieran. What reasons were there that you considered an FY3? The reason that I took an FY3 is because I wanted just a bit more flexibility. 
I wanted to be able to locum to earn some money and then to use that money to travel. So it was mainly about having that significant time off to travel because then I thought, when am I ever gonna get to travel like that again? Mm. You get married, you have children, you can't travel, you don't have the money to travel before. Now is the perfect time for it. And so that's that's the main reason that I wanted to do it. Wouldn't it be really good if, if someone like made some videos about how to become a doctor in Australia? Someone should have, yeah, someone should have thought about that. Well, if you're interested, click, in click here, 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 and here and here. <laughs> If you are interested, we've got a whole series about how to become a doctor in Australia, speaking to Kieran, my friend, about how we became a doctor in Australia, talking you through the whole pathway and making it a lot easier than it would be if you were going in blind. These are all the reasons why you should be taking an FY3 year. If you have any reasons you think we've not talked about, throw them in the comments below and we can have a talk about it. Thanks for joining us, Kieran. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.